Imagine you have a thousand dollars under your mattress and a thief breaks in every month and steals a few dollars of it. Three dollars one month, four dollars the next, and by the end of the year you've lost seventy dollars. Well there is a thief doing this as you sleep, it's called inflation. Inflation is a general movement in prices. Inflation occurs when the price of a range of goods and services rise on average. Rising inflation translates into a decline in the purchasing power over time, i.e. you just lose a bit of money. It means that money's buying power is decreasing. Inflation tends to hit those less well off, or low middle income families. Lower income consumers tend to spend a higher proportion of their income overall on necessities than those with higher incomes. And so they have less of a cushion against that loss of purchasing power inflation inherently delivers. Don't think of inflation in terms of higher prices for just one item or a service though. Inflation refers to the broad increase in prices across a sector, an industry, or the entire country's economy. Though it can be frustrating to think about your dollars losing value, a little bit of inflation, with an emphasis on a little bit, is actually a sign of a healthy economy. A moderate rate of inflation encourages you to spend or invest your money today, rather than stuff it under your mattress and watch its value diminish. Inflation can be contrasted with deflation, which occurs when prices decline and purchasing power increases. The problem with deflation is that you're discouraged from buying an item, preferring to wait for it to get cheaper. So deflation can be just as bad as inflation. One way to think of inflation is pretty simply as too much money chasing too few goods, or an economy that's actually doing pretty damn well, some would say too well. In general, inflation occurs when demand for goods and services in the economy is outpacing supply. This leads to a shortage of labour, materials, which is what New Zealand's seeing at present. Let's have a look at an example. When lots of people want to build a house, it becomes hard to source materials, construction workers, so building costs increase. There are, of course, other causes of inflation, and many are beyond central banks' control. Things such as oil prices, the movement in the currency, can shift import and fuel gas prices. Shocks can restrict supply and the availability of items, such as what we're seeing across the Ukraine or in China. Unexpected worldwide events, such as pandemics or wars, impact the availability of items. Let's talk about trust. Maintaining low inflation means we can go about our everyday lives with a high degree of trust. When you hand over a $10 bill to pay for an item, you're trusting that that note to be worth $10 in value. The recipient is also trusting that it is worth $10. When inflation is low, the value of a dollar in a year will not be too dissimilar from today. When inflation is high, money is not worth as much tomorrow and the circle of trust is broken. Once trust is lost and inflation is unchecked, inflation can topple a country's economy. An example is 2018 in Venezuela. Venezuela's inflation rate hit a more than a million percent a month, causing the economy to collapse and forcing countless people to flee the country. Inflation is measured by a range of gauges, one of which is what's called the Consumer Price Index. It includes food, household items, housing costs, transport, communications, and services. We've got living cost indexes of inflation, and they capture consumer prices, but also include mortgage payments, which of course have been going up a lot of late. Producer prices, both inputs and outputs, give a gauge of price movements within the business sector. Statistics New Zealand also measure inflation but capital goods and farm input costs as well. How have we gone? Since the late 1980s, the Reserve Bank has used monetary policy, that's effectively interest rates, to achieve low and stable inflation. Inflation's averaged just above 2% for the past 30 years, a big tick. The Reserve Bank currently has what's called a remit to keep inflation between 1% and 3%. Of course, inflation today is currently very elevated, and the Reserve Bank like many other central banks, are on a mission to get it back down and get that thief back in jail. Now, this is going to lead to some economic pain in some areas. House prices are falling and rising interest rates are, of course, eating into borrowing costs and eating into discretionary spend. Containing one evil, namely inflation, is not costless on the other side. One positive aspect is that rising interest rates have also increased savings and deposit rates. So some people are actually benefiting despite interest rates moving up to contain growth. Other countries are in a similar position to New Zealand, seeing strong inflation and economic pain around the corner. Imagine being in Europe, for example, and seeing surging energy prices ahead of what could be a very cold winter. 
Inflation is wretched. Many have not seen the destructive impact it brings. Real incomes, that's incomes adjusted for inflation, are falling. Containing inflation hurts. Unemployment is projected to rise. Asset prices are falling. Is New Zealand and other countries prepared to adjust their living standards and lifestyles to get the thief back in jail? I'm Cameron Bagri, Managing Director of Bagri Economics and the former Chief Economist of ANZ for 11.5 years for the Common Room. For more videos like this, subscribe at commonroomnz.com.